Dean Olivienza, Associate Dean Olson, Department Chairs, members of the ITT Technical Institute Board, members of faculty, staff, proud parents, and above all, the graduating class of 2015. First, I would like to say thank you, as you have given me an extraordinary honor in not only preparing this commencement address, but also allow my hair to grow a few extra gray highlights as I pay. <laughs> but seriously, thank you for bestowing one of the greatest honors of my life. As I began to prepare this speech, lots of questions crossed my mind. Do I want to give some political State of the Union address? Only if I was running for office. Maybe I should talk about the injustices of the world and the way our judicial system makes excuses for those that commit heinous and infallible crimes against the human race. We all know there are not enough hours in the day to dedicate to speaking to right of those wrongs. Or maybe I should write a speech explaining the do's and don'ts of life. That was definitely not an option because after visiting your campus, speaking with administration, and seeing this illustrious class, one thing for certain, you know the dudes of life. That is perseverance, dedication, and commitment to making your lives better for you and your family. I applaud you, class of 2015, for not being the exception to the rule, but being the rule. As you move forward, into the next leg of your educational and professional careers, you have lots of considerations in your decision making. We are in a season engulfed in controversy, court cases, policing of our community, our predictable changes in climate, and the economic instability of our great nation. So you may be asking yourself, how can I possibly move forward and become a success? Well, I'm glad you asked. Simply put, you must see the challenges as a means of educating you to walk freely towards your destiny. During my time as a student, I was not always sure of what I really wanted to do. But one thing I had was a lot of passion. As a product of a single parent home, and the first of my family to go to college, it seemed to me that just the idea of wanting to go to college was unrealistic. I was told too often to just get a job and take some certification courses. You see, I was an honor roll student, top of my class, and full of unwavering desire to become a veterinarian. Oh, but not just any veterinarian. I had to do things the hard way. I wanted to study large cats. Yes, lions, tigers, but no bears. I read every cat fancy magazine, Anatomy of the Cat, attended cat shows at the show place, adopted stray cats, anything dealt with the cat, I was involved. My mother could share stories about the countless number of kittens I, she found in my room in the closet as I thought I could save all the kittens. Who knows, maybe I was the original cat whisperer. You see, I had a passion for cats and wanted to surround myself with knowledge that would make me the best large cat vet in the world. The veterinary experience led me to many more challenges and opportunities. While in school, I became a single mom and constantly reminded that women that have children in college, they never finish school. Yes, I was walking the line between being a statistic and quite honestly, at some point, I began to believe that was my thing. The financial challenges, child care, running noses, you name it, it happened to me. I struggled to a mother. I worked two jobs. I went to school at night, sitting in the back of the classroom with a stroller and a happy meal. Not what anyone ever plans to do. However, that cat passion that I mentioned, that kept me moving. After years of school, marriage, divorce, a 
another child, one thing after the other, one thing that was constant was my passion. You see, I refused to become another single mother statistic. Here I was with two children, two and a half jobs, student in college, and living in one room but full of determination. I'm sure my story sounds like many of you in one way or another. Yes, the struggle was real. Passion is a funny thing, though. You see, passion is that drive that pushes you to achieve your dream. It's that motivating force that when you wake up in the morning, you do, you desire to do things great. And when you go to bed at night, you can't wait to wake up the next morning and do it all over again. My passion was cats, or so I thought. My passion was not about cat life. It was about the lives of people. In order for you to be blessed, you must be the ruler over the little, to be, to be, be faithful to the little, to be ruler over the many. I began to run at full speed. Chasing that dream, money and success. Cash ruled everything around me. You know the rest. <laughs> yeah. And I was chasing after what I thought was my purpose. How many of us were raised to think that success was money, cars, big homes, two dogs, a cat, and a white picket fence? Never ever giving thought to your purpose in life. During my career, I've had some of the greatest opportunities you could dream of. One in particular was my time with the federal government. I was a young woman working alongside banking presidents, major members of the Department of Defense, participating in meetings with the United States Treasury Department in D.C. I traveled all across the U.S. from Dallas to Chicago, Philadelphia, Atlanta, New York, first class, everything. Oh, I knew I had arrived. I was it. Then it crashed. I lost it all. My job, home foreclosed, not just a regular foreclosure, but one where you had 30 days to move. How could I have possibly packed a 3,500 square foot home in 30 days? I didn't. So many of my long belongings were left behind. It seems I was at the lowest I could ever possibly go, but not really. After losing it all, I didn't qualify for benefits because my unemployment was too much. Imagine that. I made too much money in unemployment benefits. It was true. So to feed my family, I had to resort to going to the Central Virginia Food Bank, somewhere I never thought I would be. That was reality check for me. But did you know that God has a way of breaking you down to nothing to build you back up to where he calls you to be? To me, I was there the pit of my existence. Oh, but God. Now, how many know that God will take you from the pit to your palace? In order for you to get from the pit to the palace, you must be able to go through some things. Now, I'm not a preacher, but the story of Joseph, his post, post to home for me. Joseph was a young man with a dream. And in his dream, he saw himself as being a leader over his brothers and his, and his father, and they would bow before him. He shared his dream with his brothers, and out of jealousy, they had him jailed. He went into a pit, and they decided to get rid of him. After they pulled him out of the pit, they sold him into slavery. Years later, when Joseph was in a whole different situation, Pharaoh spoke to him and shared a word that you would you would be in charge over my house. And at that time, his brothers didn't bow before him. You've had your own pit moments. Maybe late night study. Two to three jobs to make ends meet. Robbing Peter and Paul. 
to pay BB Auntie. <laughs> I want you to know you're in your palace moment right now. You just may not see it. See, I put so much into that government job that I didn't even realize all I needed, I already had. How will my faith turn my struggle into success? Just like Joseph, he kept his faith in God and his passion and dream to become ruler or reality. Think about it. Joseph had a dream of being a ruler. His brothers threw him into a pit, then into prison. His faith kept him grounded, and he was released from prison, and his jailers bowed before him. You have arrived. And despite all the obstacles, you emerged out of your pit. Everything you have gone through was to develop you into what God wanted you to be. You worked hard, were persistent in your effort, and now you're ready to walk in your purpose. Now, how do you know? Well, one thing is you've been snapped out of a state of unconsciousness. You made a decision today that chasing money, waiting on wishes and hopes are not going to get you to where you want to be. I had to learn the hard way. I was snatched out of a comatose state of existing and placed in a situation where I had to walk in my destiny. You have emerged from your pit and you're about to step right into your power. This is a day of restoration for your life. You made a decision to step out of faith and to take a chance with what life has first called you to be. Your emotional, mental, and spiritual chase has come to a screeching halt. You put everything on hold and your passion seed has been planted. Remember those kittens earlier? That was my passion seed being planted. Passion is what drives us to do great things. My passion seed has not only driven me to get a job, but to get two jobs. And what I love most, education. To go from the pit of being unemployed and almost homeless to walking into my house door. Graduates, I'm excited and motivated by your success. Your accomplishment does not come as a surprise to me because you, you demonstrated tenacity to walk in your path and your dream. You did not let the woes of the world determine your destiny. Oh yes, I'm unapologetically giving you kudos for showing your family your friends, and your friends of friends, that you are not who the media portrays you to be. You see, we are not just, we are a generation of not just movers and shakers, but doers and way makers. We are not misguided. We are the developers of the blueprints for our future. We are not misunderstood but the interpreters for a brighter tomorrow. We are not lost, confused, lacking focus. For the mirage that most have on their lives, we use as a beacon of God's direction for our future. I like to close with quoting one of my favorite speakers, Joel Osteen. God has already done everything he's going to do. The ball is now in your court. If you want success, if you want wisdom, if you want to be prosperous and healthy, you're going to have to do more than meditate and believe. You must boldly declare words of faith and victory over yourself and your family. Now is the time. Move into your path. Thank you.